We are really excited about our next fireside chat that we were having with Black Thought, also known as Tariq Trotter of The Root. So for any of you out there that may not know who Black Thought is, this incredible musician is the front man of the legendary Philadelphia-born hip-hop collective, The Roots. He is also a father, an actor, a visual artist, and a solo MC. He's also on television five nights a week with The Roots as part of the house band on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. A gifted lyricist from a young age, Black Thought co-founded The Roots with Questlove, when the pair met as teens at the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts. He has become known for his grasp of complex rhyming schemes, politically charged lyrics, and an encyclopedic ability to pull references from literature, history, and popular culture. We are thrilled to have him as a part of the summit, and if they can hear me, we can welcome them really loud. Welcome Black Thought. <laughs> Morning. So how are you feeling this morning? Um, I'm feeling really well. I'm feeling great. Good. So we're just going to jump right in with questions, if that's all right. OK. Um, in the last few minutes, the 15 minutes or so, we're going to open up for Q&A from the audience. OK. OK. So first off, we consider you to be one of those people that is not just an entrepreneur, but a dreamer. You had an idea. And from what we've seen, you've been able to have that dream come to fruition. It's been a beautiful, magical thing. Absolutely. Um, how, do you, how did that come about? How did the idea first come to you? Um, the idea you know, to even sort of become a musician came to me because, uh, I mean, I, I've always been an artist. So uh, I started out as a visual artist, as you know, a really young person. And that took me you know, through uh, various uh, institutions of, of the arts. Mm. Um, and I wound up at the, at the high school uh, for creative and performing arts in Philadelphia. Um, during a, a really special time in the history of that school in that uh, there were so many people who have gone on to greatness as musicians in the school at the same time. Mm. So I went to high school with like Boys to Men and mm. Christian McBride, Joey DeFrancesco, Mel LaRue, uh, Questlove. Mm. And, you know, these, are, these are people who I would see in passing in the hallway and um, I would like follow them to their to their classes and sort of you know, <laughs> sit in, yeah. and um, I was just like a fly on the wall, so to speak. And that uh, that's where I got the motivation to sort of you know to change my major, you know, not uh, unofficially change my major. What was it before? Um, I was a visual arts major, yeah. and you know, um, the medium changed, and, yeah. and it became music. And uh, between the end of my uh, freshman year and beginning of my sophomore year in high school, um, I really began to take the music seriously, and we started this uh, this band in 1987. And wow. Still going strong. Yes, I wasn't born yet, but I know it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when we, you kind of fast forward to today, but we're trying to really, for people in the audience, we're trying to let entrepreneurs know and dreamers know that when you have an idea, it's important to connect with the right people, mm -hmm. the right places, right partners. So when that idea came and you were thinking, okay, we're gonna do this band, who did you know that you had to connect with? Who was kind of available to you at the time, if you can remember? Um, at the time that we decided, okay, we have to do this band, um, I, I, it, I hadn't had a partner before. It was the, so The Roots, it, this partnership, this sort of collaborative effort was my first group. Mm. And um, I, I just had the idea that, uh, whoever I was going to sort of be, be paired with, uh, my team um, needed to be people that uh, I could learn from and people uh, to whom I would be able to sort of teach something. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just, Questlove and I were a match made in heaven in that I, you know, I was a young master of hip hop at the time already. I felt like I was, you know, just completely knowledgeable and completely immersed in the culture of rap. But um, you know, the, the musicianship beyond hip hop was still something that was very new to me. Mm. And, and vice versa, you know, Quest Love, he grew up um, in music school in the same way that I had grown up, you know, as a young person doing visual art. Um, but he it, was really sheltered. So he wasn't exposed to hip hop in that way. So I sort of, I, I put him on with Public Enemy and NWA and, you know, uh, just, just all the hip-hop of the 80s and he sort of uh he was my education in in the realm of jazz and soul music and you know the the, the musicality you know uh, about which he was uh, most knowledgeable so um 
we were yin and yang in that way. So um, I, I, I've always tried to surround, surround myself with uh, people uh, that I can learn from. Mm. Would you say the right partners have kind of found you, or have you been really intentional about seeking those people out? Um, I, think, I think, you know, things sort of happen as, as they should. Mm. And, um, you know, sometimes, you, you know, there are people who I've, who I've sought out along the way who, you know, I thought we'd be working together forever and that's, that just wasn't the case. Mm. You know, so, um, yeah, I feel like the universe has sort of, you know, placed the right people in my life at, mm. at the right time, mm. you know. I believe that, too. The, yeah. When would you say the roots kind of transitioned from being this huge just passion project to a business? Um, we transitioned from like passion project to business when we began, uh, you know, to tour. Like when we became a touring band. Like that. When I when I say a touring band, I mean when touring became uh, our main means of you know providing for ourselves mm -hmm. and for you know the whole. The, the roots isn't just the people that you see on stage. You know, there's so many people behind the scenes who are also part of the roots production. Mm -hmm and um, who are also feeding their families, you know, off of what it is that we do. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, once that, I don't know, I came to that sort of realization, that's when, you know, it sort of, okay, I, I understood how much of, of a business this brand had, uh, had become, mm -hmm. you know. And does navigating financial success at all, does that in any way impact the art that you create? Do you ever feel like um, any outside external pressure to produce, produce, produce? Um, you know, many artists feel that pressure, and it's, it, it's, it's something that uh, I definitely identify with and I'm able to relate to, but the roots, um, we've never sort of succumbed to that, you know, uh, we've never, we, we've always been the antithesis to, you know, uh, the produce, produce, produce model. And um, we've never sort of sacrificed our artistic integrity. It's always been about you know, uh, just creating something more artistic and, 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 and more meaningful in that way, even at the expense of, you know, popular success. Mm. So it's been, uh, we sort of took, took a more roundabout route to, to, to stardom, mm. so to speak, um, when it, there were very many points along the way at which we could have, you know, I could have sort of done something that would be more commercial. And we just, um, we've always prided ourselves in not sort of doing that. You know, one of our uh, biggest songs um, you know, from the 90s is, is a record called uh, Never Do What They Do. Now, well, it was the, the name of the song is What They Do, but you know, it, it, in the chorus it says Never Do What They Do. And it was about, you know, sort of uh, uh, steering clear of all the cliches of, uh, of, of the day, so to speak, and you know, sort of, you know, carving out your own route uh, you know, as, as an artist. Mm -hmm. So that became our you know, life of philosophy. Mm. Um, so at e for all do we have any entrepreneurs in the room through e for all So with our program, um, every entrepreneur is matched with three mentors that help them offer business and advice, um, guidance through your career. Are there any key people that have really helped to shape you and how you do business and, um, how you perfect your craft? Um, yeah, uh, three three mentors that I could you know speak to, just off top. Um, as a, as a, a a really young guy, um, someone that I would go to for advice was a uh, one of the youngest leaders at uh, my grandmother's church. Mm. Um, his name was uh, Arthur Price, you know, and he sort of he he uh, occupied that sort of space between being a kid and you know a full on adult who I felt like. You know, might not be able to relate to my issues. Um, so he was like a little older, so like a, an older brother. Mm. And um, I would go to him for advice, you know, from time to time, and um, I still do sometimes. He's going on to become a pastor. Wow. He's a pastor uh, in Alabama of the, uh, the historic Six Street Baptist Church. Wow. Um, but yeah, he's just my fellow Philadelphian, mm. and uh, he was like a Boy Scout troop leader, <laughs> and you know he was always in, in just in a, a a role of leadership in mm. in, in in our community. So um, I would say him. I would say uh, from a creative aspect, uh, my my longtime manager uh, Richard Nichols, mm. who um, you know just uh, instilled within us uh, the work ethic and you know the hustle that we sort of still apply today. He passed away maybe three or four years ago, 
but um, his influence, you know, still, it, you know, shines in everything that we do as the roots. And then, uh, from a business uh, perspective, um, our current manager, and uh, he was uh, also my cousin, mm. and also, you know, business partners with Rich Nichols in managing the roots. And he's a executive at Live Nation, and. Uh, manages Jill Scott, and he has a whole, you know, very many other clients now. But just from a business perspective, what Sean, his name is Sean G, and what he brought, you know, sort of into the fold was, uh, you know, um, the dollars and cents. Mm. You know, so, um, yeah, just off top, those are three of, of my mentors whose uh, you know, philosophies you know, are applicable in my everyday life. Mm, that's great. Yeah. Um, so today is November 15th, 2018. Yeah. When yeah. you look back, what advice do you wish you knew before embarking upon this, this adventure? Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, you, you always say, I wish I knew then sort of what I, what I yeah. know now. But I don't know that I would, I would change anything that, you know, that I've done or, you know, any of my experiences right. um, along the way. I think, um, you know, the man that I am, you know, is, is owed to, to the, my life experiences. You know, so yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't change anything. Um, what do you think you might tell entrepreneurs here in the room who have an idea, they have no idea where to get started? What do you think um, you should know? What should you hold on to? Um, I think you should hold on to your idea. If it's something that you, you know, firmly believe in, then uh, you have to, you know, be, you have to champion that. Mm. Um, I would say, you know, try to, always try to maintain ownership of you know like your your intellectual property so to speak and 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 you know don't you know, don't be so quick to to relinquish you know uh uh, uh that ownership you know what i mean like people talk about you know, signing a record deal or you know getting i don't know like you is even beyond the the realm of music you know um don't don't be so quick to sign over uh control of your art of your you know dream uh, you know, to, to someone else, you know, I feel like it's about building a brand and aligning yourself with, you know, people who are going to uh, share in that same vision. Mm. Um, but yeah, and I, I would also say to, to entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, to be, be brave, you know, most importantly. Um, you have to, you know, take the risk in order to, to get the reward. You have to go through it to get to it, so to speak. And um, the roots, you know, we've been around for a long time, but we've you know, we've also played it relatively safe, you know, and uh, I would say, you know, don't be, be, be braver than I, than I have been. <laughs> <laughs> so our last question before opening it up to the audience, who are your top five MCs? Um, okay. <laughs> My top five MCs. Um, I don't know, like personally, like my top five, you know, most inspirational, the MCs that, you know, I sort of have taken the most from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Chuck D of, of Public Enemy, just, you know, for being a, a revolutionary in, in a way that no other artists have been, you know, before him. Um, I would say Big Daddy Kane, um, just for you know, what he brought, you know, stylistically um, you know, at the time, and what he, what he continues to bring, you know, as, as a performer, um, as, as a lyricist, um, Cool G Rap, who I'm, I'm always compared to, um, who was a huge influence, um, and Rakim. Mm -hmm. Is that was that four people? That's four. Um, Rock, <laughs> okay, so Rakim, Cool G. Oh, and then I would say maybe uh, KRS One. Mm. You know, just for you know, as, as 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 a teacher. So I mean, again, these are these are uh, you know artists from you know, the the graduating class you know before me. Mm. But that's where I, I sort of got my inspiration from. And um, that's who I continue to sort of represent. You know what I mean? I've, um, I, like, they're, 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 the, the groundwork that they, that they laid, you know, has manifested itself, um, you know, as this artist that I've become. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So we have Tessa, who is executive director of our Holyoke program. And she will have a mic and coming around for questions. So um, first and foremost, I'd like to say uh, I go. My name's Louis Gonzalez, and you're my favorite rapper from when I was a kid. So this means a lot. Yeah. And you got a nice beard. I'm a barber, and Fahim's looking for. 
So I'm gonna head down quick. Oh, nice, nice. Um, my question is, since I've been a long time fan, years back from Organics to uh, all your albums, you had several band members that didn't make it, didn't make it through the whole where you are today. So I like to like in, in business. A couple people asked me about well, you know people that came on as a consultant or whatever or part of my team that's no longer with me. What would you say to those that didn't make it? Scott Storch, the um, you know, the Malik B. Yeah. They were with you. So how did you how did you progress knowing that team members were no longer there? What did you do to keep moving, keep your team motivated while moving through the forest? I think you know more than you know a team motivation it's it's about a motivation within oneself you know uh it's just a, a desire uh you know to to achieve that has to be you know uncompromising and and you know just unshakable in that way there have been you know other mcs who have like been my partners in the roots there have been you know very many uh musicians you know keyboardists and bassists and guitarists and you know, some of whom have left on, you know, better terms than others. But um, those who are not currently in the roots, um, who have sort of come and gone, it's because they didn't, they didn't want it, or they didn't want what it is that, you know, Questlove and I and the other members of the roots have wanted uh, as bad, as badly. And, you know, it's, um, it's hard sometimes, especially you mentioned Scott Storch. Um, Scott Storch was our original keyboardist who um, early on in our career, he sort of like went out on his own to become you know, the top producer you know, in the world, arguably. And he made you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, and, um, you know, but uh, it, it, it wasn't sustainable. And you know, now he's you know, sort of trying to reinvent himself. Um, so I think slow and steady sort of wins the race. How do you keep your teammates, how do you keep the band members morale up? Um, you know, we 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 keep each other's morale up. I mean, it's a it, like we're we're a band of of brothers, you know. So um, you know, first and foremost, uh, I think we're all of our own worst critics, and you know, we're 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 tough on 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 one another. So I think that keeps the bar like we maintain the bar at a super high level, and you know, we always have. Um, earlier on, we sort of had to because uh, we were the the first. Uh, hip hop band, you know, like the the where the members of the group, you know, played live instruments. So just uh, in order to establish our our credibility um, at a time where uh, that wasn't, you know, what you would see across the board. Like it was, it, we were almost alien. And in order to just, you know, for validation's sake, we had to maintain such a high bar, um, both as musicians and me as a, a performer and as a writer and, and an MC. Um, I think you know we we uh, that's sort of where we keep it. You know, what I mean, some some people surround themselves with yes men, and the roots is is, is the the polar opposite of that. Hi, uh, my name's Christine, and I am like, thrilled to be talking to you right now. I'm a big fan. <laughs> uh, wow. So first, I just have to say, like, I love. I have two sort of questions that go together. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about how mentorship? has played a role in the Roots journey. I mean, you've propelled so many musicians like Jill Scott, and you know, you've been a pioneer for hip hop and R&B and rap, and your sound is so unique, and I'm sure you've encountered a lot of haters and people who are just like down on creating something new, and I think all of us can understand what that's like, um, being small business owners and startups. So can you talk about that a little bit? Um, you know, I, I, I try and keep my ear to the street, so to speak, and I just try and you know, maintain uh, an, an open mind with regards to, you know, people who are bringing new ideas, you know, uh, uh, you know my way. And I try not to shut folks down. Um, I try not to burn bridges. Um, and it's, a, it's an ongoing sort of conscious effort. You know, earlier on in my career, um, I, I did, I, I burned a lot of bridges. And, you know, there are very many people who, you know, have brought ideas to me um, or, you know, come to me with a concept or come to me with, you know, an artist or someone they were working with who I may have shut down and then they've gone on to greatness. And I'm like, you know, kicking myself like, damn, you know, I should have, 
Yeah. I could have been a part of that, you know. So I think it's about uh, uh, maintaining multiple irons in the fire and, um, you know, just remaining mindful of the fact that, you know, just that one person who, who you know, shows a young person or shows someone who's, uh, who's just getting started um, um, uh, a greater way, you know, or a different, a different route to sort of get it, um, or who broadens, you know, one's perspective in that way. Um, it's, go, it's not only rewarding to the person that you're helping, it's, you know, it's self-rewarding re as well, you know? Uh, so I come from an arts background as well, and I'm starting to try to uh, start my own business. I think there's this very prevalent myth that you're either an artist or a business person, and there's a ratio that if you're very artistic, you must not be very good with numbers, and it can be difficult talking to bankers and investors to convince them that you are both. How did you navigate that? Um, I don't know. It's an interesting question. Um, you know, again, I, I, I feel it, it's... You have to trust the people that you surround yourself with, and um, I've always just you know completely trusted uh, my management and 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 you know team Tariq team Roots, um, so to speak, and uh, yeah you know I've created an environment where I am able to you know just focus more on the art and uh, you know less on the day to day aspect of of the business. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, it boils down to uh, uh, you know who you surround yourself with and just uh, you know remaining knowledgeable. Like you have to be completely knowledgeable of whatever industry, whatever realm you're sort of operating, uh, you know. In but um, you know, the art shouldn't suffer for it. You know. Thanks, Peter. Um, as an entrepreneur, we're often told like don't be afraid, don't be afraid of failure. Um, but it's so hard not to be afraid. Could you speak a little bit to your uh, relationship with fear? Um, yeah, uh, my, you know, in my life I've had very many fears. You know, I, um, it's weird, like, that I'm in a position where I'm the lead, you know, singer, the front man for this, you know, internationally known band, but I still have anxiety with, you know, even doing this, with public speaking and with, you know, standing up in 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 front of folks, especially speaking to young people. Um, so, I mean, the way like earlier on in my career, uh, the way I sort of compensated for that was I just played the back, and that's why you know I have a band where now the drummer is sort of the you know like the 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 figurehead. Um, you know, people think the roots. You know, they you know, first you think you know Quest Love, um, but it, in it, in my adulthood. You know, uh, it, it's been a conscious effort, an ongoing effort for me to uh, sort of uh, become more vulnerable as an artist and, um, you know, to, to accept more of, of the leadership onus, you know. But, I mean, it's an ongoing thing. And what I've been doing recently is doing, uh, trying my hand at stand-up comedy just because, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just raw. As a stand-up comedian, it's just you and the microphone and the people, and that's something very different than what I do, uh, even in the roots or on Tonight Show. There's no lights, there's no, you know, risers where other musicians are elevated higher than you, and it's just you and sort of, you know, connecting with, with the people at a, at, at a more visceral level. So um, that's an exercise uh, in, 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 you know, overcoming my fear and anxiety, you know, for me, so. In 2017, you went on Funkflex and dropped a 10 minute freestyle. <laughs> and then, uh, so then you, then I saw you live and you did it live, which was dope. I'm not, this is not going where I will think it's going. Uh, how, after being 30 years you know, in the game, do you still find time to work on your craft and motivate? The motivation to work on your craft. Um, I don't know. I think um, mastery is is just super important for me. And just speaking back to the entrepreneurial spirit, um, and there's there's never you know a point at which you sort of uh, you know achieve and and you're like okay that's enough. If you're an entrepreneur, um, you know you always sort of want more. You always want to push yourself. You always want to reach like that next level of of mastery. So um, I mean I feel like I'm. You know, 
I'm the, I'm a pretty good rapper, you know, and I I don't know I don't I don't I don't want it to sort of end you know with that you know what I mean I'm I'm still not content in that and I feel like uh, you know there's there's still uh, limits that that can be can be pushed there's still boundaries that can be pushed so I mean again I've been working in in other mediums um, you know I'm. I've been writing Broadway musicals and doing comedy and, you know, producing television for kids. And, you know, I do The Tonight Show every day. And, and it was just about um, it was a constant, um, a, a, a continual sort of uh, quest, you know, to, to achieve even more greatness. You know? So um, it's weird, man, that, that I went and I did that freestyle and it, it sort of shook up the world. It's the, I've been, I don't know that I'm, I've ever been more popular than right after I've, I've done that thing. But to me, it was another day at the office. I can't, I went, I did the Tonight Show. I left, I went to go and do uh, this freestyle that I've been promising Flex that I would come and do. And, um, you know, out of all the things that I've been working on in the 10 years that I've been on the Jimmy Fallon show and all that, you know, the first time that I, I came out and I actually sat on the couch and was interviewed as a guest was um, in direct response to that, that freestyle. So, um, you know the, the mastery and you know the continual but sort of elevation of 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 rap in, into high art um it is it, still opening doors for me so i'm still pushing myself he said what happened <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for, you know, all the love and support. Thank you. I've always heard that the future is uncertain. Um, I want you to know um, how you embrace this uncertainty. How have I embraced the uncertainty of the future? Um, you know, I've tried to take my future, you know, uh, uh, my, you know, trajectory, this journey that I'm on into my own hands, you know, and I feel like, uh, you know, once you accept that sort of self-responsibility, then the world becomes your oyster, you know, um, it, you know, it falls upon you to, to navigate, you know, uh, uh, the world and all these, all whatever obstacles may present themselves in, in, in your path, you know, um, you can't play the, the blame game. So, um, I don't know, I, I guess that's the best way I could sort of put it. The entertainment business is a lot different now, but also the essence of what's being brought up in that business is also very different. So, you know, hip hop is about stories, it's about storytelling, it's about substance, there's passion behind it, and I think right now a lot of it isn't passion necessarily, it's how do I make money with whatever I can do, but there's no real artistry to it. So, first of all, thank you for 
continue to make that argument that I think that right now is really missing from this generation. Uh, there's not a lot of substance, there's a lot of energy. Um, and secondly, obviously, we all we talk about finding mentors, but at the point where you're at, my assumption is that you're actually mentoring somebody else. So if you are, who are you mentoring? Um, you know, the people that I'm, I sort of mentor, just you know, younger artists, you know, um, people who I interact with. I have, you know, I'm, I'm being a Philadelphian. Uh, I try and work with, you know, up and coming artists from Philly. Um, there are very many acts and artists you, over the years that we've sort of broken. And um, I don't know, I, I continue to, to try and work in that way you know, with the young people and just, you know, um, to try and keep an open mind. I don't feel like uh, the artistry is missing in uh, in in millennial hip hop, you know, so to speak. I feel like it's just it's different, you know. Uh, their their artistry is articulated in a different way. I feel like uh, uh, the arts, just across the board, it, is about you know, storytelling. You know, we tell stories through movement and dance, and through you know creative writing and live instrumentation, and through through song and visual art. And I feel like uh, uh, what hip hop has evolved to is just something um, different. It's something that you know none of us could have sort of foreseen. But what I will say, and this is what I, I, I said uh, to some of the young people earlier, uh, hip hop has never been more inclusive than it is now. You know, lots of stuff that, you know, just was completely unacceptable or that, you know, uh, would have taken away from your credibility or validity when I was a young person, you know, sort of getting started. Um, you know, people can't say that you can't do that now. There's nothing that you can't do. So I feel like, um, you know, the art has just evolved. And, um, you know, there's, there's space for everyone to sort of, you know, to coexist, you know what I mean? Uh, how did you come up with your name? Oh man, I came up with my name again. You know, just I was a visual artist in 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 high school, and just as a painter, um, sometimes we would have to create the color black. Um, you know, with just all the other colors that we sort of had, and I felt like that represented um, you know my my style, um, which was. I don't know, we're just a bunch of different genres and influences all mixed together. Um, and then also uh, just to be thought provoking and, you know, to inspire, you know, uh, a, a, a level of consciousness, like, you know, within my community. Um, so I felt like my name, it would be, you know, fly to have a name that was a double entendre in that way. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't my first choice, but it's the one that stuck. I. Uh, I started out as, uh, my name's Tariq Trotter, I started out as MC Double T. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I shortened that at one point to, to DT, and I'll be like, I'm DT Rock, or that was DT. And then um, my name was T Metaphor. Um, and then I was like, you know, I'm, I'm at the highest level of, you know, my, my, name, I'm, I'm, my name is Apex, and I was Apex. And, <laughs> You know, you go through all of these sort of, uh, you know, names that you sort of try out. But Black Thought is the one, you know, that sort of stuck with me. And that was my, uh, you know, Lion King sort of moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, like when it's, when, 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 it, when it's good, it's good. And when it's right, you sort of know it's right. So that's, that's, that's the one that, that has been with me since I was uh, in the 10th grade. I'd like to echo the thanks of you being here today. I'm very grateful. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. As a writer, um, I sometimes feel like my creativity comes in waves, and I wonder if you get um, writer's block and what do you do to free yourself of that? Um, good question. I do. I get writer's block um, sometimes, and in those times, I try to, I try to be more of a like a conduit. I try and just block my inspirations less because. You know, there's there's music, there's lyrics, there's you know song all around us, just in your everyday life. But I feel like um, in our in, you know in in the 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 moving and shaking, sometimes we uh we're less dialed in, you know, and um, we sort of you know block that uh, that inspiration out. So it's about just you know just trying to be more in tune with my surroundings and with the people that are. Uh, you know, whose paths I cross on a day-to-day. -day. And it's, it's also about, you know, pause. 
you know you have to you have to take a, a moment to sort of to to think and to reflect and 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 to listen you know uh you know not only to the actual sound but just listen to the environment i think uh, uh ralph waldo uh the, the everson said um in the, it in the pause i hear you know the call you know so um in times when i have writer's block i sort of you know i try to be a, a better listener and um i'm jotting down you know a word here an idea a concept you know something that i heard Oh, that I overheard, you know, third party in a conversation that someone was having at lunch or, you know, uh, something that I see uh, on a billboard passing by or uh, you know, I'm flipping through uh, the, the viewer's guide on TV, you know, the name of a TV show, like anything could sort of um, you know, represent that, that initial sort of idea after which uh, the song or the, the piece or whatever it is that I'm trying to write um, sort of you know it's all cake after you get that 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 initial you know uh, uh ignition hi my name is ivy big fan of your music thank you for being here hey man th thank you can you somebody who's really busy i'm sure can you talk about your day and time management how you start your morning and carry on for your day yeah well time management for me um i i try and get to bed at about 9 30 or 10 o'clock at night um because I have a, I have a three-year-old at home, a three-year-old son, who he gets up in the middle of the night and he comes into my bed w with my wife and I, and then it's hard for me to sort of get a good night's sleep. So I try and get my sleep in when he's asleep in his own room. And then um, I try, like I wake up at about 3.30 in the morning. And when I get up, um, I'm doing just that. Like I'm trying to, uh, you know, to see if I'm gonna get some inspiration from somewhere to, you know, to write a song, to write, you know, to work on. I've been working on this Broadway musical for a few years that I'm, you know, in crunch time now having to finish act two. And, um, you know, I watch a lot of documentaries. I watch a lot of, you know, news TV. Um, and I'm just trying to, you know, just find that 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 one idea that's gonna, you know, be the catalyst for everything else to come. And um, I, it's hard for me to do that once everyone in my house has risen. So I try to get up like before the house is up, you know, so I'll get up at 3.30, I'll like work from like 3.30 to 5.30 or 6, and then I'll wake the rest of the house up and get everybody, you know, ready for school and stuff, and then I'll lay down again. Um, if I'm not doing anything roots related or, you know, having meetings or anything to take before tonight's show, then uh, I'll show up at NBC at around 2 in the afternoon and rehearse, uh, you know, whatever it is that was on the list to, to rehearse today. Very often we rehearse music and sketches, you know, throughout the day that may or may not make it uh, to the show that actually airs. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of hurry up and wait. There's a lot of, you know, why did I have to be here this early if it's not going to make the show? And, you know, I do that sort of thing. And then uh, we shoot from about five to six or you no, know, a little before five to a little after six on a regular day. Today, when I when I get to uh, NBC, we'll do two shows because we tape Friday's show on Thursday. So um, Friday is the day that I usually use to uh, you know to catch up on all things non NBC, non Tonight Show uh, related, which is you know the, we we're on for 44 weeks a year. So we only get eight weeks in an entire year to sort of do everything else, to, for me to be an actor, to be a writer, to be a father, to, you know, everything else that I do in life has to happen in that eight weeks. So that time has to be, you know, managed uh, super specifically. And um, you know, I try and remain conscious of that. And I try not to waste time. I'm always on time. Um, you know, uh, I don't believe in, you know, showing up even five minutes late for something. I was talking earlier and I said, you know, I'd I'd rather show up three hours early than five minutes late because you know, no one's ever been penalized for showing up early. And you know, I've been penalized, you know, for showing up late. So Okay, we have one more question. Hi, my name is Sabrina Vieira. Um, and I wanna know what has been the lowest point of your career and what have you done, what resources have you utilized to pivot towards the path of success? Um one of the lowest points in my career was, I would say, around 2007, 2008, when uh, the industry was, was changing. And, you know, the way people uh, received music was changing. And the way, you know, uh, concert tickets were sold 
was changing. Um, it was like uh, the evolution to uh, from brick and mortar and 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 CDs and cassettes and, and vinyl to the world of of you know streaming and and and, and digital music. And um, you know the Roots. We were uh, a touring band and we were signed to MCA Records, I think, at the time. Um, yeah, and it was, you know, I don't know, we, like, the people, let, let, people were coming to the shows less, we were making less money, and that whole sort of, you know, uh, all the people who were depending upon the Roots brand to be a success in order to feed themselves and to take care of their families, um, you know, that was sort of in jeopardy. And um, that was around the same time that, you know, a young, uh, Saturday Night Live uh, alum, uh, Jimmy Fallon, who was also just a huge music nerd. He was as much of a music nerd as we were, you know, comedy nerds, so to speak. And uh, uh, you know, he 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 came and he presented us with this opportunity to to sort of take a chance and and you know be his backing band for Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. So um, they always say it's, it's darkest before the dawn, and you know the darkest point. You know, between the darkest point of a line is you know where dark meets light and vice versa. So um, yeah, I guess in 2007 or so, like I, it, it was uh, our future was uncertain. And 2008, when we decided you know to do you know to to begin this this new chapter in our lives, um, lots of people who had like ridden with us and who were diehard Roots fans, they had serious doubt you know, uh, as to whether or not this meant we were selling out and if, if you know, we were compromising our artistic integrity, if the music would change. And um, it was the opposite, you know. Um, we embraced the, you know, the, our foray into, into the late night television um, as, as a platform. And, you know, we've been building on that platform ever since. And, you know, the music only got better. And I've, I've, I've gotten better as an MC. We've gotten, you know, tighter as musicians and because uh, we never rehearsed as, as a touring band. We would say, you know, we play enough live on stage, you know, together that, you know, we didn't need to rehearse. But now working uh, on this show, like we rehearse all day, every day. And, um, you know, practice makes perfect. You know, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like now we went from you know, one of the lowest points in our career to you know, I feel like I'm at the, the the height of my career right now, you know, and the sky is still uh, the limit. So before we wrap, <laughs> <laughs> if you feel the need, would you like to give us a brief wrap about entrepreneurship? Um, about entrepreneurship. I don't know. I'm a, I could say some words and just see. You know, you you may you could take from it what you what you will. Okay. Um, I say the big wheels keep turning like Ikes and animes. The church dinner, the church kitchen hustles dinners every Saturday. Pull over. Let me grab a plate. I tend to gravitate towards how fish dinner in a styrofoam platter tastes. My grandfather sported plaid Donny Hathaways and hustled for everything we had until he passed away. When I would ask about what path to take, that's when he'd laugh and say, no man is an island, but I'm a castaway. Casualties, I seen them like the French Foreign Legion. On the streets, they used to carry out bizarre procedures in jean jackets and Jabara Adidas, back when local R&B was just as soulful as orthopedics. Me and my man twisting up some reefer and wishing. We knew all the town hitmen and the likes of Sam Christian on the edge of existence, man. Listen, understand, respect and fear was the all-American ambition for badass kids in a laundromat folding a load when lo and behold, a whole nother fork in the road. My hope for them is that the truth is eventually told out on the corner where whatever you can sell is sold. I heard murder ran this vast perverted land since black back when Burning Man was blacks in Birmingham. Before the presidential election diversion scam. Matter of fact, before they clapped Franz Ferdinand. You gossip on Jay and Beyonce or Kim and Kanye, but keep rising to the top is what my mind say. Picture my daughter drinking water with a sign says for colored girls. I ain't talking into Zaki Shange. I heard in Senegal I was a king and general rich in every resource, precious metal and mineral. 
before the devil entered the realm of the Look, with that Jamaican funk, we got to get it in the hoof for generations. Under God, indivisible, psych war patience, vampires in an interview. Become institutionalized, what a nigga do. But what we had to do to survive, none of them could do. Thank you. Thank you.